Welcome. Uh, you know, I do this for you, not necessarily for me. I, I, I do find some entertainment in the feckless kicking and screaming of people on the internet, but ultimately it's all very overwhelming and it's all been the kind of the same kind of stuff. But since the audience wants a smart tears on Vince McMahon, well, who am I to say no? Of course we have to do the smart tears on Vince McMahon and um, his return to the board and how people are very, very upset. There's plenty of op-eds and tweets and all sorts of beautiful things to go into. So let's start with people who wrote articles. Now, I'm not going to read the entire article because that would be ridiculous. But I will be summarizing and uh, reading parts of articles. So this is from John Powell, uh, of, uh, editor-in-chief of Slam Wrestling. Again, most people are anonymous when it comes to smart tears. Wrestling journalists are not. So uh, for starters, he starts out by saying that uh, he is not surprised. Then he starts talking about the people who resigned, the uh, Manjit Singh and uh, Ignace or whatever. Those people are not important to us. They're important to the board and, you know, that kind of thing. But do I care about Manjit Singh? No, I don't. I wouldn't. You can line up any a bunch of different people of all races and creeds. I couldn't pick Manjit Singh out of a lineup. I don't know who the hell that guy is. That Ignace guy either, he could have fell on my head when I was four and I wouldn't have any idea who that guy is. These people don't matter to me. They matter to WWE, I guess. Well, not anymore because they don't work there anymore. So, um, <laughs> it, it, I just don't care. Um, so let's read a, a bits and pieces of this. Well, it is interesting that Manjit Singh was one of the guys who uh, pushed for events to be investigated, which is not a problem. Considering the investigation gave Vince, of course, time, you know, that led to his quote unquote retirement, which gave him time to plot this little uh, money in the bank maneuver. So um, <laughs> let's go through this whole thing. Let's see. He says, quote, big man claims in his public statements that he is back to facilitate the sale of WWE. One has to wonder, though, how McMahon's presence, a person who used company money to pay off those he had affairs with, and he has accused of multiple times of sexual assault, among other alleged transgressions, will make the WWE attractive to buyers, or would be a person prospective buyers would be interested in negotiating with? Could it be that McMahon knows that he, as long as he is the figurehead, that a sale might not be in the cards? That the sale is just a ruse for him to maintain a foothold? in the company and the eventual return to doing what he loves more than life itself. And that is running the WWE, including the booking. Well, <laughs> this is the interesting thing because we're, we've reached paranoia stages when it comes to wrestling fans and Vince. They are just an absolute, just a beehive of anxiety about Vince controlling the, the, the creative. It's okay if Vince goes and knocks around stuff, you know, in, in, in Titan Towers in Connecticut. Everybody cares about that. But as long as he's not, you know, on television or behind the scenes yelling at Michael Cole's ear, heavens to Betsy, he can't do that. But here's the interesting thing. This guy who was a wrestling journalist said, quote, a person who used company money to pay off those he had affairs with. That is false. That is false. He used his own money. He used his own money. The company is arguing that because there was a benefit to them, then it should have been paid by them. But he did not use company money. This is a mistake some people make multiple times in all these are in in these uh, arguments. Then there is the uh, here is here is an interesting little piece that he says too. Um. Could it be that McMahon knows that as long as he is the company figurehead that a sale might not be in the cars? That the sale is just a ruse for him to maintain a foothold in the company. That basically prospective buyers don't want to deal with Vince McMahon. Um, who the hell? Look, they've been dealing with Vince this whole time anyway. Vince was accused of rape in the night 1990-something. Um, that's no big deal. I, I doubt anyone really cares. But let's let's put this to the to the test 
that a bunch of other people who've probably been accused of rape or sexual assault or whatever, who's probably done the exact same thing Vince did, because there's no doubt that Vince isn't the only one. When you have conversations with these people who are bankers and lawyers or whatever, these folks, you know, they're fountains of cash. Vince didn't get arrested for anything, by the way. Of all these things that Vince, people know for a fact that Vince did, he got, he has been arrested for absolutely one thing, and that was the steroid trial. That was it. The Owen Hart thing, he was not arrested for that. Jimmy Snuka, not arrested for that. Riddick Chatterton, not arrested for that. New York, California, not arrested for any of those. None of this stuff that, y'all, that they claim he did, he was not even arrested. In fact, most of the investigations went nowhere. So people are just believing stories because it's easy to believe the story. I don't know how many times I have to say he is a public person. You can say whatever you want about people in public. You have the freedom of speech, especially since he is a not a not private citizen. He is a public citizen. When you are a public citizen, they can do things like National Enquirer that, you know, you had gay sex with a monkey or some crazy stuff like that. And you can't sue them, you know. It's very, very hard to sue people. Let's put it like that. Because it's not impossible. It's very, very hard to sue people. And Vince was going to sue Rita Chatterton, by the way. He stopped suing, pursuing the lawsuit because he was wrapped up in the steroid trial. And it was eating up a lot of his funds, which is why WWE almost went broke in the 90s. But he was about to sue Rita Chatterton for going on TV and saying that he raped her. So even if you believe the Rita Chatterton thing, he was willing to go to court on that one. So he was not arrested for any of these things. People are just like, he was all, he was all the allegations. All allegations, some allegations. A lot of these people are, are you know, scumbags. Vince is just, he's a scumbag too. I'll give you that credit. But to think that he's going to run off potential buyers, maybe. Maybe that's the case. Maybe Again, maybe he is the fucking buyer. Have you ever thought about that? Or maybe... Just maybe, and it seems like to, to be mostly the right thing, people prefer to deal with Vince. You know, I think that 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 could be one of the things too. People don't understand, they don't take into account that they could be wrong. Right? I always take into account that I could be wrong. Maybe Vince re- did really did rape all these chicks. If that's the case, then somebody should have put him in some handcuffs a long time ago. The fact that nobody did tells me that. Well, it's easy to extort people because it's like, hey, I'll tell everybody you raped me or I'll tell everybody, I'll write a book about how we had sex in the backseat of a limousine, like one of those little superhead books, like a Keith Murray interview or something like that, where we talk about, I could talk about your penis size or what your, what your favorite kink is, what your favorite position is and embarrass you in public. Like, um, what was that chick's name? I said superhead already, but her, her real name, um, I forget what her real name is, but she wrote a book and embarrassed a bunch of rappers and stuff like that about their dick size and what their positions were and what their kinks were and all that other kind of crazy stuff. Women do that. And nobody has anything to say about it. They do interviews talking about it and all kinds of stuff. There's uh, a, a porn star who is doing interviews with podcasters because her boyfriend is a wrestler. Wouldn't it be nice to not have people running around gossiping about your personal business? on podcasts and interviews and books or whatever, me and you can't, we can't do that, you know, but it would be nice. It would really be nice if we could have that kind of shut the fuck up, go away money. That would be great. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's not, it wouldn't be great. It would be great. It would be fantastic. Shut up, bitch. Sign this. Go away. I don't care. Take your trinkets. Get out of here. Anyway, He goes off on Stephanie. He's very upset with Stephanie because Stephanie McMahon wrote (laughs) that she's welcoming back Michelle Wilson, George Barrios, and they're looking, um, they're looking forward to working together with, you know, this trio that has cashed in Vince's money in the bank and stole board seats. So he says, this is Stephanie talking. The woman who was named world's most influential female CMO in 2020 by Forbes. The woman who was named a Stuart Scott Inspire Award honoree at the 2017 ESPN Humanitarian Awards for someone 
for being, quote, someone who has taken risks and used an innovative approach toward helping the disadvantaged. A woman who Ed Week has included in their list of power, most powerful women in sports for five years running and previously chose her as a 2019 brand genius honoree. Stephanie has made her name, her career on a platform of raising women up and and outside of the business world and WWE. Then he goes into that lie about hush money again. About Vince, well, the lie part is that Vince used company money, which he did not. Second, what does he expect Stephanie to do? That's my question. What do you? What is your expectation? Again, it's easy to sit on your couch and sit behind your laptop or whatever and typically type things that you would like to say. What do you expect Stephanie to do? Put yourself in her shoes. She is the CEO and chairwoman of WWE. What do you expect her to do? What do you expect her to do? Put out an email talking about how she's a feminist and how in feminist WWE, this will, we will not stand for this. What, what do you expect her to do? What, she's going to argue with Vince in public about this. You want him to, she want her to hit him with a steel chair. What do you want her to do? Why is he, it's very easy. That's why I, I don't like journalists and I don't like activists. They always argue the most ridiculous points. There's nothing she can do. Vince put his balls on the desk. You cannot make these decisions without me. Balls on desk. What are you going to do? You're going to hope that he gets what he wants. He gets the fuck out of here. That's what you're going to hope he, <laughs> that's what because you're not going to do anything. But there's two guys, those two guys quit. Like, yeah, I'm sure. Two guys that you couldn't pick out of a lineup quit. So what? Ultimately, Stephanie's entire life has been WWE. And she's going to rip the company in half, arguing with her father, whom owns 81% of the voting power, 37% of the company. What what argument is there to be had? He's got He's got the stroke. What is she supposed to do? It's over. All these awards are nice. Mind you, she got all these awards because Vince put her in those positions. I could, you know, that's that's the bare bones truth. Not to say she didn't work for it. But if her name was Stephanie uh, Johnson or something like that, would she have gotten this far? Probably not. So what do you expect her to do exactly? Quit? She's supposed to quit. She dedicated what almost 20, 20 years of her of her career and life to this. Is she supposed to quit? Is Triple A supposed to quit? How many of you people actually quit your job over shit like this? Not because somebody went to prison or anything like that, but because of allegations. It makes no sense. These people are retarded. Excuse my language, folks. Let's finish this one off because I want to move on to another one. It says, just as I was sure McMahon would eventually weasel his way back in the company, I have no doubt that he will weasel his way back into <laughs> to at least have some influence over the booking, hiring and firing in the WWE. It is what makes this man tick. It is what drives him. I cannot see him relinquishing control of that ever. The last six months was just a vacation for Vinnie Mac as he plotted his return, which probably began July 23rd, 2022. And in that time, Triple H has managed to increase the average Raw ratings by 2.3%. And the SmackDown ratings have declined 2.4%. So he was so frustrated, he put declined instead of increased. And then 2%. It's a 2% increase. He also got the lowest rated Raw episodes ever. And put on a clip show. And we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I'm pretty sure I'm going to stumble across it. Um... Who knows what the hell he did to the revenue and Peacock for leaving Peacock dormant for a month. I mean, he threw Raw into a black hole called December 2022, where there was literally nothing going on. Building to nothing. Going nowhere. All, all of those Raws were just the shits. And they were all getting lower and lower ratings. Because it was not going anywhere. And everybody realized, you know what? There's no pay-per-view for them to build to. You know, there's no big match that he's building to on this show or anything. 
just tank that joint. But um, the people, there is no price on being uh, indignant. So John Powell, indignant, hilarious. Here's another article. The Sound of Silence, How This McMahon and Dana White Survived by John Pollock of Post Wrestling. Um, <laughs> John Pollock. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at this. So John Pollock, of course, runs down. He's talking about this McMahon and Dana White in this one, which is interesting because, you know, I tied these two things together, too. He says it wasn't a moral dilemma for the company or its audience. They treated... McMahon as a deity, both behind the scenes and on television. McMahon responded to the first Wall Street Journal report in June by throwing himself on television, seeing an opportunity to take a scandal and draw a television audience. The response? Thousands of cheering fans would rather cheer McMahon the character than condemn McMahon the individual. Yeah, condemn a guy you don't know. You, you don't know this man. Um, then he starts talking about the Wall Street Journal article. He says, if you were holding your breath for a unified statement of condemnation for the acts alleged by the company's leader, one would be left wanting as McMahon's departure was presented as retirement, as empty as one of the fans that have become accustomed to following pro wrestling. I love these op-eds and because these people are so indignant. They have such moral high grounds while they, you know, they know everything about other people's business or at least can speculate on other people's business. That thing is so crazy that people feel like they've read some articles about you. All of a sudden they know who you are, you know, and then they can read minds too. We'll talk about mind reading probably a little bit later, but this is interesting to me that people will get so indignant about this stuff. Here, here's, an, here's when you know that people are just standing on a soapbox yelling. It's business, and the train keeps moving because these are men that are never told no. Where there is no difference between wants and needs, because everything is within reach and nothing is outside of their grasp. In a world without consequences, there is no concern for crossing the line, because it all blurs and it's all solvable, not by sheer force of will, but by complicity and acceptance from the unions formed around you that want access to power, and it's your ultimate currency. What the fuck does any of that mean? Power. If they wanted to get rid of Dana White, they could. People, they try getting rid of Vince. These motherfuckers just <laughs> unkillable. You know, you just can't get rid of them. They've been trying to get rid of Vince forever. I don't even think death is like I said at this point, once he made this miraculous comeback, I will never doubt Vince again. I'm telling you, they need to check his coffin when he dies to make sure he's in it. They, it's going to be one of those things where like I used to think it was ridiculous, right? Like, you had to be dead for, like, two years before you can, your student loan debt would get written off. Vince McMahon makes me realize why that's in there. You know? Like, Vince McMahon's going to have to be dead for five or ten years before people can finally... <sighs> because this is a miraculous comeback. I, everybody thought he was dead. Everybody thought it was over. And then that hand came from up under the crown, baby. The thunder struck, and he cried off that bitch. Man, come on. <laughs> I don't see how you can't find that shit entertaining. This shit is entertaining. But yeah, Vince is not going anywhere. And to say that they have power as their ultimate currency is ridiculous. Dana White works for a bunch of other people. If they wanted to fire him, they could. So they don't want to. It's like people watch the videos and realize the context of the video and was like, you know what? It's probably not that big of a deal. But let's just fuck it. Forget it. You know? Nobody who matters don't want to work there. It's almost all people who hate you anyway. And that's the beautiful thing about journalists. These, they hate Dana White and Vince McMahon anyway. So it was, it, if they farted in the elevator, these people would act like it was worth destroying their lives over. Just such a callous usage of his bodily fluids or some horse shit. That's because that's what these people do. So let's, let's continue because John Pollock didn't stop there. The, now he's got a megaphone on top while he's standing on his soapbox. McMahon or White could retire multiple times over without a thought or care for financial stability. 
It's the craving for influence, of power, of people's lives that are a game and one in which they win year after year. Controversy over the controversy and down to their core. The wins and losses are not measured in ethics, morals, or character, but in numbers, dollars, and deals. If these men are good for business, those around them will see no evil, hear no evil, and most importantly, speak no evil. <sighs> the dramatic, the dramatic writing of this crap. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Dana White shouldn't even be in this conversation. The guy got hit by his wife and he retaliated. I'm sorry that, that you think that's the worst thing a guy could, could ever do. No, it's not the best thing in the world, but goddamn, he retaliated to being hit. Which anybody with a goddamn pulse would do, whether you're 4, 44, or 54. If you hit somebody, they're going to hit you back. Keep your goddamn hands to yourself. At least Vince, you could say, and eh, look, he's got a 30-year history of making bad decisions. You know, stupid decisions. But... Let's be real. Right, where are we going with this crap? What do you want to happen? What would make you happy? Because I'm guessing you're centering yourself in this whole thing. But what really knocks me on my head is wins and losses are not measured in ethics, morals, or character, but in numbers, dollars, and deals. What? Wins and losses are not measured in ethics, morals, or character. Well, Florida Evans, we, we need to be poor because we want to be ethical. If you really want to say something is ethical, you know what's not ethical? Saying a guy did some shit he was never convicted of. You want to say it was not ethical? You want to say something that's not ethical? Saying that a guy was the victim of domestic violence and then treated him like he's the abuser. I mean, you saw the video, didn't you, John Pollock? Where a woman hauled off and smacked Dana White in the face. That's domestic violence. He was the victim of domestic violence. But he retaliated. And that's the problem here. How dare he retaliate? Not how dare he you know, brutalize and beat his wife in a drunken rage or some nonsense like that. How dare he retaliate to being abused by his wife? These people are ridiculous. <laughs> and it, and these are the people that everyone looks to uh, when it comes to uh, information, the journalist class. Now let's begin our romp through the peanut gallery. Now that we've got a nice little taste of what the intelligentsia of the wrestling world thinks and their high and mighty moral standards. Let's just get to the trollers. Let's just have some real fun here. Um, the senile old man can't stay away, can he? <laughs> He's senile. I don't think... Would you really be... See, this was a nimble move, right? We make fun of Vince all the time for just being old. You know, the old... You know, the, the crazy old man, senile, demented, this kind of thing. But this was a savvy business move. That man's mind is sharp. Because nobody saw this shit coming. If it was so, you know... You know, he was some kind of uh, mentally deficient. People would have saw this coming. They would have been like, oh, he's going to do yada, yada, yada. Nobody saw this shit coming. And then it happened quickly, too. Like, it wasn't like he laid out a, a note on the 20th and then it's, it's no, you know, May and nothing happened yet. No, he moved this shit along pretty quickly. As soon as he got their response, he responded right back. And then he was back on the board on the 5th or well, 6th. Six days afterwards, he gave he gave him a heads up. Three, you gotta go, and that was it. He moves pretty fast for a, a senile <laughs> old man. I think the scary part is that he might not. He's not slow, you know. Like people seem to think that he's some doddering old man. Like you, you. I am not underestimating events anymore. No more. He would have to literally be in a wheelchair 
breathing through a, a tube or something like that in order for me to be like, yeah, this guy's fucking done. Of, or he's going to have to be dead for a while. I mean, dead for a while. He's going to want to be one of those guys. Again, you're going to have to make sure he's in the ground. You have to come back five years later, dig him up and make sure he's still in there. Otherwise, he'll be back. Vince McCosby is about to strike again. Watch out, ladies. Vince McCosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby back on the street, though. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Oh, boy. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, <laughs> imagine all the wrestlers that either came back while he was gone or will be back soon like Regal. I can see Vince firing a few of them again just to spite everyone. I don't think so because some of those people, you know, he fired them for a good reason. Because I think, like, what are they doing now? Like, Vince fired fucking Dakota Kai. I mean, are you really going to, what, re cry for Dakota Kai? She's not doing anything. Who cares about her? Uh, I don't know. William Regal, I don't think he wanted to get rid of William Regal anyway. You know, I think William Regal would be safe. I think there's a lot of wrestlers who, would, if Vince was to take over, he would get uh, fired. Here's uh, here's another one. If the talent is against him coming back, they should all no-show SmackDown and Raw. No talent, no show. That would make quite the statement. Wow. Maybe you should Google the CEO of your job or maybe your boss or something like that. And if they have anything that you disagree with, which I'm pretty sure they do, in their personal histories, you don't go to work and see what happens. Again, it's easy to just say shit online. I, I I am upset about this. So this is I'm like, man, nobody really cares about this shit. Because if you did, you would be Googling your own boss right now. You're probably not going to. Google your general manager that got your immediate supervisor and see if he doesn't say stupid shit on Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Don't apply rules for other people that you don't hold for yourself. Pretty nonsensical. Here's some more. Only top guys like Roman and Seth aren't concerned. Others got to be crapping their pants. I I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't think anybody gives a shit, really. They're probably grumbling, like you know, most people grumble. They're probably like, "What the fuck? How do you, how do you manage to do this?" Well, guess I'll see him around the office, you know. But it's not like the wrestlers work in the office anyway. They're on the road. They got other shit to do. They ain't got time for what's going on in Stanford. Um, moving on. As soon as as Vince heard that Triple H was bringing back Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green, he had enough. Triple H crossed the line. Events had to force his way back so he could say, no way, broski. <laughs> and somebody said, no, it was Mandy Rose release that pissed him off. <laughs> you fired the girl with the titties? The black girl with the titties? Uh, Pop, she's not black. She's just very tanned. She's tanned, uh... Not black. No, I'm sorry. That's a joke going around for people who not who don't get it about the Mandy Rose thing. Uh, here's another one. In the same week, John Laurinaitis gets blackballed from an indie armory meet and greet. Gotta love corporate America. Well, John John Laurinaitis is not the majority shareholder with 37 percent ownership of this company. He was just a middleman, and you know, if he had not been promoted. I doubt anybody would have known or cared about John Laurinaitis. So what ended up happening is John Laurinaitis was promoted was promoted to do a meet and greet. And when they found out about it, you know, Twitter did what Twitter does. All the Twitter activists tweet, 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 and they ended up getting it canceled. But it's uh, it was all a joke, to be quite honest. Here's another one. This is likely going to hurt the business out of WWE, and I have a feeling we'll see the impact on this business. Not a fan of purchases with bigger deals. At a time when network suppliers and so on care about people's voices and feelings and making big decisions accordingly. Really? Because, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of those people in Disney have been listening to folks cry and complain about Kathleen Kennedy for how many years? And she continues to, to keep working. WB has listened to people complain about Batman and Superman and Ezra Miller, and they continue to work. Where do you see any evidence that these corporate, these corporate bums, uh, they only get rid of people who are expendable, right? If you're expendable, then you can't do 
shit in today's world without getting kicked out. You call somebody a faggot, it's over with. All right, it's over. Your whole career is over. You're some middle. Like there was a guy who got booted out of a space program for wearing a, a, a inappropriate shirt. That's the world that we live in today. But if you're really somebody who matters, that shit doesn't happen to you. And it doesn't matter that, about you being rich, about you being black or anything. It's all about if you are a necessary component in what they're doing. You've seen tons of important, quote unquote, black people who say outrageous, outlandish things, you know, associate professor of such and such at middle class university. They go on TikTok and say the dumbest, most racist, uh, horrible shit, and they don't get fired. They don't get held accountable for any of the crap they say. And then what happens? You realize they're important in some way to that university and either through their diversity and inclusion programs or some crap like that, which keeps them from getting sued or some other venture. They're important. It got shit to do with them being white or rich. It got everything to do with, Hey, I know they're not going to be so quick to get rid of me. So I'm going to be able to say whatever I want or do whatever I want. And then they say and do whatever the fuck they want. But let's continue this whole ordeal here. He is bound and determined to destroy this company, isn't he? Why would he be? Dest why would he destroy the company? See that I think people have no conception of what the fuck uh, destroying things actually mean. Like when you destroy a sandcastle, you don't build bigger sandcastles; you kick them over. Over the years, Vince has been building bigger and bigger sandcastles. He has not been kicking anything over. Oh, he was destroying the company. Sandcastle just keep getting bigger. He's destroying the company. It keeps getting bigger. What the fuck? That, that doesn't make sense. Uh, here's an interesting one. <laughs> as much as I love AEW, Vince doing stuff like this is the greatest. This is the man who crushed WCW. No one is taking WWE away from Vince except Vince himself when he sells it. Amazing power play. Out you go, Triple H. Ha 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 ha. Vince thought you sicked in running NXT and now main roster. The laughs are in the the comment, by the way. And he's, he did write sicked instead of sucked. So, uh, it is what it is. I'm not mad. Have fun with this. Uh, Vince, please don't come back to creative. He, you should just be a recruiter like JR was and focus on finding the next big stars and obviously make decisions on a company level. Of course, I don't mind him doing whatever. Just don't come back to creative or the gorilla position or whatever, please. Yes, Vince McMahon is going to go out and scour the planet for the next pro wrestler. What the fuck? <laughs> You imagine Vince McMahon outside of, you know, sitting in the crowd of some GCW show surrounded by sweaty, beardy, half gay weirdos and watching somebody do wrist locks and being like, God damn it. I'd like to see him on Monday night. Get his number, get his contact information. Like the fuck, he'd be the biggest star in the building. He wouldn't even be able to see the show. It'd be people surrounding him, asking him questions and pelting him with tomatoes and shit. He's not about to do no goddamn recruiting. No, he's not about to sit and spend his time watching tape. He's not you. He's him. Here's the beautiful one. Again, told you, paranoia. We know he never left WWE. He was always in control. He told Stephanie and Nick what to do. He just let them control the WWE so the IRS couldn't take it from him. What? What does the IRS have to do with this? He owes tax money? I don't, I don't know, is Erwin R. Scheister going to show up <laughs> to take the company? I don't know. I don't, man, I don't get it. Um, here's another one. Watch how many advertisers run far, far away from this creep. This is an interesting start to 2023, that's for sure. Well, that is a legitimate um, argument um, about the advertisers. Again, this is something that even Stephanie and everybody else could, you couldn't, you couldn't get away from it. You know, it was pretty obvious and they was pretty loud about that, that um, advertisers did not like uh, Vince McMahon and their ad dollars was kind of was kind of slow during the time where Vince was there. And it picked up a little bit once Vince was gone. 
So now that he kind of muscled his way back in, who knows what's going to uh, what's going to happen now on that front? But that front is at least legitimate. Here's another one. Vince saw that the Miz versus Dexter ladder match main event on Raw and had enough. It's time to clean up the house and put the entertainment back into sports entertainment, pal. I don't know about that one. I'm pretty sure he saw that and was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He probably went to bed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was like, thank God I'm not in Gorilla for this. <laughs> Shit. You brought back Thick Boy, pal. What the fuck are you doing? You know, fire him again. Fire Yoko again. Oh, for F's sake. Why the company was just starting to make some real progress and now he puts himself back in it. I'm done. Wow. Wow. That's nutty. <laughs> These people are so emotional. It's, it's great. Uh, he says, I guess missing out on taking Mandy Rose's 90% of her fan time page earnings was the final straw. Vince needs to take almost everything from the independent contractors. Expecting that WWE locker room morale article tonight. Well, I at least everybody knows how the, the wrestling media works. All of a sudden, they start doing morale. What is what's morale like? Like, what? What the fuck would you mean, what's morale like? Is somebody doing, like, a, a goddamn poll or something like that? Which has always been the question when it comes to, like, the morale articles. Like, did somebody walk around with, like, how do you feel today? Okay, good, not as good, could be better. Like, what What kind of, how are you gauging morale, you know? How do you know people are upset about this and not the fact that they probably lost their luggage or their dad died or somebody got sick or they frustrated about something else? How do you know that it's especially one issue that's upset people? I work in a place. I work in a place with human beings. Human beings are often upset about something or other and morale is up or down depending on whatever's going on. Occasionally there's a big issue like, hey, we're going to be late on the paychecks, which has never happened, I can say. But let's say that that would be happening. That would be a number one thing that would, you know, tank morale. You know what? We're not going to get paid on time. That's bullshit. Um, we're not going to put up with that. But this, I could see it probably being split. Most people are not going to give a shit. They worked for Vince before. 90% of the people who are in the locker room work for Vince already. Most of them are tired by Vince. So they're going to be upset that Vince is there? I doubt it. I think people mostly are saying to themselves, I hope this would be the case. When it's reality, most people are just kind of like minding their own business because, well, their business is wrestling and getting paid. And interestingly enough, the last one we're going to hit for this particular space, which has been the Wrestling Inc. comment section. Here's a, a one that I think puts things in perfect perspective. Way too many people think that wrestling fans care what Vince McMahon is alleged to have done. Newsflash, they don't. Remember the huge ovations he got during the final appearances on Raw and SmackDown? The only people who are pretending to care are the anti-WWE Meltzer cult, who care so much that their only complaint is about how WWE booking will change, not about any of the alleged victims. For the cult, this has been always been about their hatred of Vince McMahon, for having the audacity to believe wrestling should be entertaining, and that people pretend to fight isn't a serious sport. Wow. Wow. That hurt a lot of feelings. That's a that was fire in the hornet's nest right there. There's a lot of people who are very upset. Um he continues, most of the people complaining on Twitter were the usual hysterical geek glasses and pink hair brigade that think of man passing them in the street of sexual assault. The days this lynch mob got their way are over. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna coast on that last line. Because there's still plenty of people who are getting their way. I think somebody got fired today for some silly stuff that they said online or whatever. Because they were some throwaway game developer or something like that. None of this stuff matters. But to the average people who have real problems, they don't care about this shit. You know, you're talking about people who, again, didn't go to the police. If anything actually occurred, they're all looking for money. Or took money. Because that's what they cared about. And that's pretty much the only thing that they cared about. And ultimately, I don't give a shit about that. Sorry. You know, but if it was your mom or if it was your sister, it wasn't. So don't say if it was your mom or if it was your sister. I don't give a fuck. 
That is not a appropriate argument to make. You would be emotional if it was happening to you. Like, yeah, maybe. Which is why I think it was Thomas Jefferson, I believe it was, who says that emotional people shouldn't be their own judges. Yeah. You know, you should take a step back. It's definitely for other people. To to that's why we don't have the victims do on the jury for for crimes. You know, people need to look somebody needs to look at this thing. From a perspective of objectivity. That I don't know anybody involved with this. As much as I say Vince McMahon is one of my favorite white people or whatever. I don't know him. He could have done all of the things that people say that he did. But my thing is I'm looking for the fucking evidence. So I don't see any. I see evidence of he paid off some broads to go away. And I can see a lot of reasons why he would. I see a lot of men in his position would pay women to go away. And I see why the women would do it. Why they would take the money and go away. I also see why other people would whisper to reporters or journalists or whatever about things that they don't know that much about, but maybe they're exaggerating or whatever the case may be, but whatever. I'm just looking at things and saying to myself, this is believable. This is believable. This is not. I doubt that he raped all these different women and it all of a sudden nobody thought to go to the police ever. Not even the one that everybody knows the name of. She didn't even go to the police. Nobody went to the cops ever. Rita Chatterton waited almost six years before she filed it. She mentioned a complaint on television. I don't know. I come come on, man. That's not even realistic. Again, rape is the only crime, the only one where it can happen to you and you're not sure what happened. You're not, I don't want to talk about it. Somebody steals your fucking car, you never shut the fuck up about it. So the bitch stole my fucking car, man. Your your wallet goes missing, credit cards go missing, somebody stole your goddamn identity, you never shut the fuck up about it. But you get raped all of a sudden, you're quiet. You sit in the corner. I don't want to talk about it. What the fuck? No. Mm-mm, I'm not buying that. I know human beings. I know some people get victimized by shit and they don't really want to discuss it. I get that. But six years... Again, this supposedly happened in 1986 or something like that. And she didn't make it public until like the 90s. What? Oh, I had to wait for my good friend Andre the Giant to die. Oh, you believe that, do you? Why does nobody who know Rita Chatterton and Vince McMahon believe that it occurred? Except friends of Rita Chatterton. How about that question? Oh, let's go back to this thing. CEOs and executives have way too much power. You can bang all your employees, then retire, then reinstate yourself. If an employee did that, they'll be sharing a cell with the Unabomber. An executive does that, and here's a golden parachute, and you can come back when things die down. Hmm. Well, considering when you're an employee, you just can't reinstate yourself. If you quit, then you quit. (laughs) It's what it is. Yes, there are levels in life. There's a hierarchy. Some people have the power to go on vacation for three weeks. Some people barely get a weekend. I mean, it is what it is. What are you going to do about it? That's my question. You're very upset. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Here's another one that I think offers some well-needed perspective. If you take the pro wrestling world as seriously as your job, your family, your health, and your finances then this news, whether you love Vince or hate him, will impact your entire world today. If you see wrestling as scripted entertainment where the unknown can happen because that's just how things are, like I do, then sit back, watch, and keep your life and laugh about the whole thing. Breaking news, people. Vince is back. The world is not ending. Which is perfect. That's absolutely effing perfect. That is great stuff. If you take this thing that damn seriously and you care about quote unquote unnamed victims who might or may may or may not exist, then I don't understand you. Um, I think that if if, it's always easier, let's say, if the victim has a face, but Jane Doe, John Doe, people, the people said, no, I'm not buying that. I'm not feeling bad for the people said or anybody who got paid millions of dollars to go away. No. Because that's women living life on easy mode. And I know people are going to be very upset about that. I don't care. All right? You know, men don't get paid off to go away. 
unless they really did some fucked up stuff. I'm talking like some real fucked up Corey Feldman type stuff. That's the only time a man going to get a payout to go away. And even then, they really don't get paid out. They get ignored, which, you know, I don't want to get indignant about that because that's one of the reasons why I get so, you know, ass blasted about the whole rape accusation stuff. It's because, you know, if it was men, nobody would give a shit. They act like it was no big deal. All right. Now, we've been at this for about, what, 40 minutes? Almost. We're finally getting to Twitter. So, <laughs> you guys asked for this. Vince McMahon being back at WWE could seriously impact the involvement of people like The Rock and John Cena for WrestleMania 39. The last thing Hollywood actors want right now is that kind of negative press surrounding them. Again, I point you to Ezra Miller, who still has a movie coming out, despite the fact that he kidnapped an underage girl and <laughs> traipsed across the country with her. His movie is still coming out. So... I don't know where people get this idea that Hollywood is some kind of moral space. It's not. It was literally Epstein's playground. Literally, just, it's full of Weinsteins. What Vince McMahon supposedly did is probably light work when it comes to Hollywood. There's weirdos in Nickelodeon that had foot fetishes that was following little girls around taking pictures of their feet. I'm sorry. Vince boning adult women. I don't give a shit about that. When you got pedos all up in, you know, fucking Nickelodeon. I'm sorry. No. Uh, I don't think anybody cares. And plus, these guys worked for Vince for decades. So, I don't understand. And this is some wrestling journalist, too. Cause he, I was about to say he's got a blue check mark, but <laughs> it's not. It's, that doesn't matter anymore. I'm sorry. Another victory for cancel culture, a definitely real thing that has taken down this man and Dana White. Oddly enough, you saw like cancel culture is one of those weird things where it's like white supremacy or racism or something like that, where you say you propose that this thing is real and you provide some, uh, let's say support that this thing is real, that Cancel culture is indeed real. Like I said, I was talking about earlier about, you know, the space scientist who wore a shirt that somebody thought was inappropriate and he ended up getting fired. How is that not cancel culture? You know, how is it not cancel culture when people are saying things in their, you know, to their family members or something like that on Facebook, it being sent to their bosses and them getting fired? When, you know, a woman is fired for her job, from her job because she called the police on a dude who was hanging around outside of her house or something like that. Like, how is that, how can you say that stuff is not real? Well, it didn't work on Vince McMahon and Dana White, two guys who you personally don't like. Therefore, the entire conception doesn't exist. It's like, no, it works on pretty much, that's because some people are immune to the shit, you know, for whatever reason. Doesn't mean that it's not real. And I'm pretty sure if you talk to people about white supremacy and you'll say, how, what about Oprah Winfrey and Shaquille O'Neal and Eddie Murphy and Denzel Washington and all these other black people who become multimillionaires and all, all, everybody in the NFL and everybody in the NBA and everybody who become multimillionaire actor or actress or business owner or whatever. Why isn't big bad racism stopping them? And they'll say, oh, well, those are exceptions. So it's like, yeah, Dana White and Vince Man are exceptions to a situation that is far more realistic than quote unquote more white supremacy. Here, let's go. I know there is a way to sue Vince McMahon. I did look it up. It's difficult, but they can sue a majority shareholder and force him to remove the stock. Vince has legit violated the terms of the shareholder agreement, as well as basically holding the company hostage. You know, it's not like, you know, that place is full of multimillionaires with, you know, lawyers and stuff. I was pretty sure that, you know, a company like WWE where board members who are multimillionaires, people who worked in business before, I'm pretty sure they got attorneys and they can figure that out, that all that was illegal. And they probably would have told them like, Vince, you can't do that, brother. You can't just force your way onto the board, baby. You can't do that. They'd have told him that from the beginning. They'd have sued his ass. Well, he still might get sued. Who knows? He might get sued two weeks from now, for all I know. But I'm pretty sure that if they could legally stop him via, via a lawsuit or something like that, they probably would have threatened it. 
and they may actually fucking do it. We'll see if it actually occurs, though, because I don't know that much about, you know, business law. I don't know shit about any of these these corporate dalliances that they got going on. I've never run a multi-million dollar corporation. And this, to me, is something special. It's deep. So I have no idea what might happen through this whole ordeal. Here's an interesting one. Here's one that's just absolutely heartbreaking. If Vince McMahon remains a board member come WrestleMania, LGBT in the ring will not be covering the event. Well, you know what? That's goddamn heartbreaking. I was really looking forward to LGBT in the rings and their uh, deep analysis of WrestleMania 39. I was really looking forward to it. I really hate that this would happen. And that it, Vince McMahon would force them to, you know, to do this. But it's unfortunate that it is happening. I'm so sorry. WWE wasn't loads better under Triple H. But it was better enough. And business either went up or didn't change. Vince McMahon and his pathetic ego needed a collapse on both fronts and got neither. He thinks that this move means he's not a loser now, but he's a bigger one than ever. Okay. Uh, he thinks, again, mind reading, Professor Xavier, do, 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 do. he got their Cerebro on, they could tell you what you're thinking. Um, this guy works for what culture? I'll just, I'm not going to say which one it is because it doesn't matter, but he works for what culture? I looked. Um... If Vince McMahon sells WWE, that's the end of the wrestling we've been known since birth, as we know it. Imagine Warner Discovery owning WWE. Motherfuckers can't even get Superman right. Hashtag Vince don't sell WWE. I am also Vince. Hashtag Vince don't sell WWE. I think I am hashtag Vince buy WWE. I don't give a fuck where you get the money from. You can get it from the Saudis. You can get it from the fucking Chinese. I don't care. You know. Keep the money, keep the company for yourself. Burn the motherfucker to the ground when you're done with it, because it's going to be over with anyway. All right. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm also on a uh, train. Vince, don't don't sell it. I think it was bullshit anyway. I am in the paranoid stage. That's that's where I am. I am in the paranoid stage where I think Vince is just utilizing this to get his foot back in the door. And by this time in two years, if he's still alive, he's going to be like. God damn it, pal. And it's going to be all is good, you know. <laughs> uh, here's another guy. He's a journalist, but I don't know what his name is. Because his, his, I'm pretty sure Moonlight Grand is not his real name. This man did not need to do this. He doesn't need to be a director or the executive chairman or to help WWE navigate a sales process. His standing as controlling shareholder would have sufficed. He has now taken the company's primary income stream hostage. He wants control. Yes, he wants to control his exceedingly large investment into WWE. Not just financial investment, but also his 40 years of investment. Plus the years he spent as an employee of this same company before it was known as WWE. Back when he was a ring announcer and a commentator. When his dad ran the company, he's got sweat equity up the ass when it comes to WWE. And I don't understand why people expect him to just become a rubber stamp. Oh, Vince is, we're about to go take this contract to doddering old Vince while he's sitting on the beach. And here, here, dad, sign this. And he's supposed to go, uh, whatever. And that's it. I'm like, no, he's got 50 years of sweat equity at the very least. He worked harder than anyone to build this motherfucker. If you, you got them, and I think Jim Cornette was perfect with this. If somebody's going to sign a check for seven or eight billion dollars, they're going to put it in the hand of Vince McMahon. And be honest, would you want it any way differently? Hell yeah. If I built something for 50 fucking years and Coca Cola or something like that come along and they want to buy it from me for four or five billion dollars or whatever, put the check in my hand. You know, if I'm still here, put it in my motherfucking hand. The hand that built this bitch. So what are these people talking about? Let's move on. Been watching WWE for 36 years straight. 
I never in my life thought I'd say this, but I did not want this McMahon back. <laughs> I can understand not wanting Vince back. Uh, <laughs> it's been watching this shit 36 years. I didn't want it back. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Why are these people so upset? If this McMahon comes back to run WWE TV, I will tune in to see whichever show Michael Cole is on to watch the light leave his eyes. Oh, I would love to be a fly on the wall when Michael Cole comes in that building and Vince got the headset on. He's looking at him, giving him the big thumbs up. Michael Cole would probably sign his fucking resignation papers on a napkin right then and there. It'd probably be the best thing. That I, can... <laughs> I fucking hate Michael Cole. <laughs> That'd be the best thing that could happen to me. They should just prank him. Yeah, they should bring back what was that stupid show that they did, Swerved? Bring that back for one night where Vince just sits behind the headset, I'm back, pal. And then Michael Cole quits. And then they could be like, Mission accomplished. And then he turns it back over to Triple H and Michael Cole never gets told that it was a joke. He never fucking comes back. He fucking sucks. Doesn't matter that Vince was in his ear. He sucks. He sucks without Vince in his ear. He's trash. He's bad. He's bad at his job. He's just very bad at his job. Here's another one. Dear Tony Khan, I have hated on you in the past, but I apologize. You're amazing. Please buy WWE and save us from Vince McMahon. Kind regards, WWE viewer. Tony Khan. Please ask your daddy for $7 billion. Ask him to sell the Jacksonville Jaguars so that you can buy WWE. That's what you're saying. What a joke. That's great. That was a great one, though. That was pretty funny. Vince McMahon is the prime example that consequences don't actually happen to rich, white, old people. They just take sad vacations and then keep being rich, old, white people. What do you want him to do? You want him to die? Is that what you want? Because he was going to be rich and white regardless. He was rich and white when he was retired. So this comment literally adds nothing to the world. Unless you wanted him to lose every single penny that he's ever earned in his entire life. And then mad through, the, through magic becomes the same shade of color as fucking Wesley Snipes. He was going to be rich and white. From the day he was born to the day he goes in the fucking dirt. That's just what he's going to be. Well, him being white was going to happen regardless. He's going to be born white, die white. There's nothing he's going to do. There's no in between. The rich part, well, that's questionable. But he was going to be white, period. That was just going to happen. And since he made the money, and hell, he could write a check and give a lot of it away. I'm sorry that you that your version of accountability didn't occur. What you think accountability should be did not occur. Sorry that this happened to you because that's really what this stuff is about. It's about not other people, but it's about you. It's y'all boy, JD from NY. Tonight we burn it down. Fuck Vince McMahon and his ego. Maniacally changing agenda. If you are a talent, a fan, or anything in between, and not worried about him completely taking control again, you should be. I don't give a fuck about Vince taking over. I've been watching Vince McMahon do silly shit on television for fucking 30 years. You think I'm supposed to all of a sudden, what, turn into sand? I'm going to turn into salt because he took over again? Come on. Just be realistic here. Triple H ain't doing something that's that damn fucking good. It's not like he's uh building, you know, castles out of Fabergé eggs or something like that. He's not putting on the Mona Lisa of pro wrestling shows here. He's just putting on fucking basic, boring-ass wrestling shows. That's it. Basic, that's because it's different. Doesn't mean it's better. Doesn't even mean that it's good. <sighs> John Pollock, he's back. Just a tweet, though. Not to get on a soapbox, but the palace intrigue of WWE today has completely overshadowed the allegations that led to his removal to begin with. McMahon issued emails, a press release, and at no time denied the allegations, offered contrition for past behavior, or any empathy. They want him to deny the allegations. I saw David Bixenspan make a similar comment. As a matter of fact, here it is right here. 
It needs to be reiterated that the only, only thing Vince McMahon denied since the scandal started was that the affair with the paralegal was not consensual. He hasn't denied the broader abuses of power, the specific coerced sex act allegation, or the spa groping allegation. Well, he, he again, he wanted to sue Rita Chatterton. This shit is over 20 years old. Okay. Second, if he says it didn't occur, do you all of a sudden say, I believe him? No, you're not going to fucking believe him. So, so what if he doesn't deny it? I wouldn't bother. R. Kelly denied the shit. People didn't believe him. Bill Cosby denied it. Nobody believed him. Michael Jackson denied it. A lot of people believed him. But that was after, you know, he was under FBI investigation for 10 fucking years. And you could probably still find people who believe Michael Jackson molested kids. He was under FBI investigation for 10 fucking years. They found nothing, nothing, period. And he still gets called a pedophile. Once you, once these things are thrown at you, there's no amount of denial that's going to all of a sudden turn that shit around. The only thing you have to say is, where's the evidence? We should always be looking for the evidence, not looking for salacious, gossipy ass rumors. Here's what I say. If Vince McMahon gets reinstated as CEO of WWE and gets full creative of the product, there needs to be a mass exodus of talent and employees. Every wrestler should boycott. He can't run a company if no one wants to work for him, period. Again, that's just people assuming that everybody thinks the way that they do. Everybody feels the way that they feel. And that's absolutely not true. It's absolutely not true. I think Vince probably went a long way in some people's minds by stepping down because he allowed the investigation to occur without him being there. So once the investigation occurred and the investigations reports were made public and everything, and people saw that there was probably not going to be anything major coming out of it. He felt like now is the time to come back. You know, like all of these allegations and all that horse shit, it just seems like, well, it is what it is on that tip. But did he do something into which he's going to be arrested? Well, yet to be seen because, you know, the United States Attorney's Office is still looking into it and the SEC is still looking into it. That's why I wouldn't have him back, you know, if anything, because you don't want that. You don't want that shit to splash all over you and your company, you know. But overall, he allowed them to that he allowed WWE to have their internal investigation and he cooperated with it and everything, you know. He showed some level of contrition there. He didn't try to hide shit and he didn't try to stay around to influence it, which I think goes a long way, especially since he could have. Uh, I think this is Bixen's fan again. I just realized something. Vince McMahon is making it this lethal dose of poison move as the window is open for any woman he's ever preyed on in New York and or California to sue him and potentially WWE thanks to their new look back window laws. That is all cool hanging over this. Like, well, wow, uh, Bixen Span. Aren't you late to the party? We already knew that. Um, I'm pretty sure that he was, he's either thinking this, the company's going to be sold by the time the lawsuits even occur, or, or he's not expecting anything to happen out of these deals. Um, or maybe he's already got those things handled and we don't know it yet. Again, these, who knows? But again, that's why I wouldn't want him back. You know, I wouldn't want Vince back because he is still under investigation and he does still have these cases open in other places. It's not smart to have him back in this position. I mean, the board was not 100 percent wrong when they said it probably wouldn't be prudent for shareholders if you were you know, still involved because for fuck's sake, you probably about to get sued for sexual assault or something like that. You know, and you're going to probably have to go to court over this or you know, make another big payout. So it's probably not smart. And then who knows what the hell the U.S. Uh, attorney's office is going to find him, the SEC. So, but I'm thinking he's probably considered, again, we don't, there's information asymmetry. We don't know what he knows. He probably already has a buyer set up. He's just going to go through the process, sell it, and then face his days in court or whatever. Who knows? You know, who knows? 
Vince McMahon manipulated a return to the board and controlling voter interest of the company that ousted him for unscrupulous activity on January 6th. You know who would be proud of himself. Uh, I'm guessing it's supposed to be a Trump reference. Because, you know, everybody knows you overthrow the government by storming into the chambers. That's how governments are overthrown. Again, you would you would have to be stupid to think that's the case. And then you would have to be stupid to believe that other people thought that. Oh, boy. Not only is Vince senile, but he is a liability and completely untrustworthy. If I was Stephanie, Nick... Triple H, or any of the board members, including Wilson and Barrios, I would want to keep a close eye on Vince as much as possible. I would keep two eyes on Vince, by the way. I would keep four eyes on him if I had him. And my ears open. I'll put a leash on him. I'll put a GPS track on him. You could do whatever the fuck you want. He's going to do whatever the fuck he wants. And ultimately, that's the only thing we can do is sit back and say, He'll do whatever he wants, man. And you just have to shrug. The only way to get rid of him is for him to die. And everybody knew that. Another one. People keep comparing Vince McMahon taking over the board to Donald Trump on January 6th. I think that's a bad comparison. A more apt one would be Vince being Napoleon returning from exile in Elba. They'll be teaching about Vince McMahon in business classes 200 years from now. Which I'm pretty sure will put a smile on his face. Considering he managed to get away with this. Com apparently completely legal. Uh, people would rather quit than go to court over it. They're like, no, fuck this guy. I'm out of here. <laughs> Vince wins. He always wins. But ultimately, it's not really going to harm the company. I'm a fan of the on-screen product. I don't care about the, what's going on off the screen. It's just interesting. You know, we find that kind of stuff interesting, but I don't, uh, my two little shares of WWE stock is less than 150 bucks. Well, it was when I bought it. I've spent more on shoes. I've spent more on dates, on mattresses than I spent on WWE stock. So, I, but I don't take this that seriously. You know, let's move on. No one wants Vince McMahon back at WWE. If it's true he's back on the board, then that's really shit. As well as being an awful human, having too much sugary, and looking like a freak, he ruined WWE. Sent all the best wrestlers off to AEW, which is now a hundred times better than WWE. AEW is a hundred times better. Yeah, that old Kip Sabian, Orange Cassidy thing. I mean, my God. It puts Andre and Hogan to shame. Idiot. Vince McMahon, I've defended you for over 30 years as a fan. Now I hate you. You vindictive, jealous, petty old man. You couldn't stand to see WWE succeeding without you. You just couldn't peacefully pass this down to Stephanie and Hunter. I hate you. Hashtag don't sell WWE. This is what Smart Tears is all about. And his, I want to give his name so badly because it's, it's so, it's so indicative of, this is the core encapsulation of smart tears for Christ's sake. Oh, oh, oof, oh, good Lord. This is excellent. All it took was six days into the new year. And WWE has potentially already been destroyed. Vince McMahon is officially back on the board of directors. And if you don't think he is making all day-to-day -day decisions, you're out of your fucking mind. This is a nightmare. Uh, maybe you ought to Google what the board of directors actually does. Google board of directors and look at what a board of directors actually does. This is y'all boy JD from New York, by the way. Um, apparently, he doesn't know what a board of directors actually does. They don't run the day-to-day -day operations of a business. They're just the governance system of the business. Um, you should know that, I think. If you're going to have a... 
that's kind of been the key of this whole thing is that certain people doesn't know what a board of directors does. It just, it just sounds very important and it is, but it's important for a different reason. You know, they have fiduciary responsibilities. They were watching out for the investments, stuff like that. There's people involved with this. who don't, you know, get involved with the day-to-day operations, but they have money tied up in the company. They want to know that the company is going in the right direction, making good decisions. The board of directors helps with that, you know, so that's, you know, you can look up the role of board of directors and to see what Vince McMahon is actually doing now. None of that's going to be writing television. Okay. (laughs) So I'm, I'm telling you, relax. All right. Just relax. Uh, let's see. Is it me or does it feel like Vince McMahon has decided to use the nuke options because maybe those in charge could have leaked all the negative things to get control of the company. Well, it, they already stabbed them in the back by going to the wall street journal. Why not just drop it all? I guess they figure we are just going to drop just enough in dribs and drabs, by the way, to get them to go away. But I feel like they probably found out who their rats were in the boards of directors. And it's probably what Vince came back for. He came back for vengeance. And I don't think it was against that man, Jit Singh guy, you know, maybe, he, even if he was the guy who wanted to investigate Vince, that doesn't mean he's the guy who, you know, who snitched. I would want an investigation. I don't see anything wrong with Manjit Singh did. You know, I definitely would be like, wait a minute. We got to look into this. I mean, you have to, as members of the board, you have to look into it. If you think that this guy is using company money to, to pay off women, you know, you just doing your due diligence. You're doing the basic functions of the board. You're investigating the CEO for inappropriate use of funds. That should be, you know, the base thing that you should be wanting to do. Everybody should have been down for that. (laughs) So I don't know, but now who told wall street journal in the beginning? Well, uh, yeah, that's, that's the person he should root out and probably fight them in the street. Cause that's what I would do. Unfortunately, I saw Vince McMahon's footprint on SmackDown last night. Just go home, Vince. You've done enough harm to WWE. I don't hate you, but this is not 1996 or 2004. WWE fans, include me, believes in Triple H. We know the game and how to play it since you left WWE. Well, that's sweet. We know the game and how to play it. We believe in Triple H. Triple H got all these burner accounts out here. He's got an army of bots. You know what? Tony Khan might've been right. Maybe Triple H's army of bots is now going out here in this anti WWE. Um, it's crazy, crazy. Oh boy. The re-ride was short, but I'm done with WWE with Vince McMahon, AKA Vern Gagne 2.0 to once again, ruin all three brands and to once hold good talent down. VKM needs to be tested for dementia. With that being said, I'm done with WWE for good. This time, many other fans will follow F A L L O W follow. Good Lord. Oh, woof. Woof. I have been a WWE fan for 23 years. I never in my life thought I would say this, but I did not want Vince McMahon back. There's no way he's going to ruin it again like he did during the pandemic. WWE has been much better now. Incredible matches, superstars return, and UK shows. Well, goddammit, Clash at the Castle, Bloke in the Bank, the UK, yay. No, come on. But why did, how did Vince ruin it during the pandemic? I'm pretty sure the pandemic ruined it. What the hell? And it wasn't contrary to popular belief. It wasn't Vince that created the goddamn pandemic, you know, (laughs) and the grand finale, you guys, um, this is the last one. We've been here for a long time. My my voice is going to be all over this joint, bro. All the WWE talent who praised Triple H and purposely slighted Vince McMahon in interviews, bro. Good luck. Stupid, 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 stupid. From day one, bro. From day one, bro. Vince had stooges in the office 
reporting everything back to him, bro. Reporting everything back to him, bro. Man, payback is going to be a biatch, bro. An absolute biatch, bro. The final take of Vince Russo on Vince McMahon coming back. Vince is going to come back and get revenge on everybody who slighted him before. What a joke. I don't think so. I think he has bigger fish to fry. He's trying to sell this company. He's got a bunch of other things going on outside. Look, I will be concerned about Vince taking over the creative. If Vince just beats everything. If the if United States Attorney's Office doesn't find shit, the SEC doesn't find shit, these lawsuits from these women don't pop up, if he just walks through this thing completely unscathed, then I'll be concerned that he's going to take over creative. Um, but as long as he has something else that he has to deal with outside of the company, I wouldn't be too concerned about him running creative. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he had some... I don't want to say say, but let's say he probably was an advisor of sorts. Anyway, you know, I'm pretty sure Triple H, you know, you think Triple H over the Thanksgiving or whatever was just staring at his plate and didn't talk about creative ideas with Vince. Never, ever. You know, you think he never called him on the phone? Pop, what should I do about uh, Johnny Gargano? Uh, he lacks charisma. What do I do? Fire him, pal. Can't do that. Uh, fans like some fans like him. Uh, some are very interested in uh, his work. Uh, I'm not sure how to make him interesting. You're gonna turn that motherfucker into the toy, like uh, Richard Pryor or some shit. That might be the only way you might be able to fix Johnny Gargano. He likes toys, right? Turn him into a toy. Go watch the toy by Richard Pryor, the Richard Pryor movie. Just reenacted with Johnny Gargano. He doesn't have the charisma of Richard Pryor, but at least it's something that he's interested in and he might be able to get away with that. But I'm pretty sure Vince had it, you know, some ideas here and there when it comes to everything. But Vince being back has really thrown people for a loop. It's been fun, y'all. Uh, again, I did this for y'all. Didn't really do it for myself, but I, I got a lot of laughs out of it. Hopefully you guys did too. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys for your time. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.